Hey everybody, we're back with the Van Show talking to my friend, Margarita Engel. Say hi, Margarita. Hi. Hey. So Margarita, the kids want to know about you. So tell us, where are you from? Well, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, my father's hometown. But we were able to spend summers with my mother's family in a town called Trinidad on the south central coast of Cuba. Whoa. My father had traveled to her hometown after seeing pictures of it in National Geographic magazine. Uh, he's an artist and he went there to paint. And they met on his first day there, which was Valentine's Day, and they fell in love at first sight and got <laughs> married and uh, moved to his hometown. So that's where I grew up. That's amazing. It's like out of a romance novel. But we were able to spend summers in Cuba with that, her family. That's so cool. And now, and now for those of you that don't know, Cuba is an island. Is that right? Cuba is an island, and it's just off the coast of Florida. It's one of the closest neighbors of the United States. Now, Margarita, do you have any pets at your home? We do. My husband trains our dogs for wilderness search and rescue Whoa. to find people who get lost while they're hiking in the mountains in Central California. You are an author, is that correct? Yes. Now that wasn't always your job though, right? That's true. Because I love tropical nature so much on those summers in Cuba, I studied botany and agriculture, specifically agronomy, which is crop production. And I was actually the first woman agronomy professor at one of the polytechnic universities in California. But I have been writing poetry since I was a young child. And I gradually uh, overlap, did both kinds of work, writing, creative writing and um, teaching botany and agronomy. And then eventually became just a full-time writer. That's awesome. Now, you, you've got a book here with you. Yes. The, the, the Jazz Owl. Yes, Jazz Owls. And so can you tell us a little bit about this book? Jazz Owls, the subtitle is a novel of the Zoot Suit Riots. This is a historical verse novel during World War II and uh, also the Cuban musicians who played in the bands that the young Mexican-American uh, teenagers were dancing to jitterbug style music, to jazz music. It was wonderful, lively music, but this was wartime. And the sailors who were sent to Los Angeles, millions of sailors were sent to Los Angeles for basic training on their way to World War II. They could not uh, adjust to the site of interracial dancing. They were outraged and they attacked the Mexican-American teenage boys who were wearing zoot suits, which was a style of loose clothing that was very well suited to jitterbug dancing because they had to leap and they'd throw the girl up over their shoulders. Wow. It was very um, athletic dancing. And uh, they attacked them with baseball bats. Oh. Uh, they burned their zoot suits. So it would be better for history to call these the sailor riots rather than zoot suit riots because the teenagers did not start it. They were the victims of the attacks. But because it was wartime and the penalty for rioting in wartime in, in uniform for U.S. Uh, military was death. So Whoa. the police would not arrest men in uniform and they arrested the teenagers instead. Uh. I wanted to write not only about these historical events and how they changed the community that I grew up in. But I also wanted to honor the Mexican-American community who were my neighbors there in Los Angeles, who overcame this incredible, you know, being the, the victims of violence, they overcame it to become uh, peace activists during the uh, subsequent years, the farm workers strikes and the anti-Vietnam war movement, they led the nonviolent movements of the 60s. So, and that was basically the same generation of people. Wow. And um, Did you get the, I, I'm all oh, about sorry. peace. So that that's my message from telling about this era of violence is the beauty of uh, overcoming it to honor peace. A fun story. And it's 
one of those stories that I just love to tell about somebody who was left out of the history books. Aida de Acosta was a Cuban-American teenager from New Jersey who flew a motorized aircraft six months before the Wright brothers. And she was taught how to fly by the Brazilian inventor of aircraft, Alberto Santos Dumont. And I bet everybody thinks the Wright brothers invented aircraft, but they didn't. Alberto Santos Dumont did. Uh, and he's, of course, in the Brazilian history books as the uh, first aviator. She has been left out of even the history books about women pilots. What? So I have been really excited about helping to bring her back into history. And uh, I tried to tell her story in a fun way. She flew a dirigible in Paris. And what, what was that that she flew? A dirigible. They called them airships at the time, but it was basically a giant balloon but motorized. Oh, uh, like like the blimps you see at football like games. Like a blimp, yes. They're also called blimps. Cool. But they were motorized, so they weren't like hot air balloons that had no engine. And uh, when the inventor offered her a ride, she said, no, I don't want to be a passenger. I only want to be the pilot. <laughs> so he agreed to give her lessons, and then she flew on her own, and I recently spoke to her 80-something-year-old granddaughter who told me that when her mother looked up and saw her flying the airship, she fainted. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known that when I wrote the book, I would have included it. And, and just so everyone knows, you didn't write the, draw the pictures, is that right? You, I did you, not you draw the pictures. Sara Palacio did the, the paintings, and they're beautiful. So this is the first page. One day, a girl named Naida was strolling on a lively street in a lovely city when she glanced up and was dazzled by the sight of a huge balloon that glided as gracefully as a whale-shaped moon. Below the balloon, an airboat dangled, and inside there was a man. If that man can fly, so can I, cried Aida. All I need are some lessons and a chance to try. Aida's mother scolded, no, 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 silly girl, don't be so bold. Ay, 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 no one will ever marry a girl who dares to fly. Whoa. Well. At I, that time, yeah, I was this say. was true, that women weren't supposed to do things that were different. Never have I ever... Oh, this is tied into your book. Never have I ever flown in the air. You have. I have. Were you a passenger? I have been a passenger many times, but one time I was the pilot. What? I you, took, you were a pilot? I took one flying lesson in a very small airplane. And how did that to, go? Just to see what it felt like as research for writing. And, and what did you think? I was surprised that there wasn't a lot of fancy equipment in a small airplane. I expected all sorts of radar to take care of knowing whether there were other things that you might bump into up there in the air. But I was very surprised that the way it was done is to look up, look down, look to the side, and look to the other side to make sure you weren't going to hit another airplane or a bird or a building. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's your safety precautions. It was very you got simple. windows. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.